protecting me. What's up gamers, Gordon here. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a game that lets players go head to head and toe to toe with one another. The game, of course, I'm talking about is Smash Up. And Smash Up is gonna let you do just that. You're gonna be smashing up bases, collecting victory points. Each player is gonna be picking two factions that don't normally play well with one another, smashing them together and battling out with other players. Smash Up is a great fun game if you like to battle and you like to brawl. Smash Up is an AEG game. It's two to four players and it plays in about 45 minutes. I'm gonna take us through the game turn by turn. So let's get ready to rumble and let's play Smash Up. Let's play some Smash Up. Um, a normal game of Smash Up, you play uh, the player that gets 15 victory points first wins the game. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna play the seven victory points um, just to keep the video short, fast, and to the point. But in a normal game of Smash Up, regardless if it's two player, three player, or four player, the first player to 15 would win the game. For this, we're gonna play to seven. Um, I'm gonna play this as a two player game. And as I usually say, this isn't gonna be a nail biter because I'm gonna be playing player one and player two, but just to show you how the game plays turn by turn. Um, I've got the cards, the faction cards that come with the game already kind of set up here. I figured we'd go ahead and do the draft of that just to show you that since the setup of this game is pretty fast, pretty quick. Um, if you want to see a full setup and component overview, watch our set it up video for Smash Up where I take you through all the components and show you how the game sets up. But for this, I'm going to set up pretty quick and then we'll get the turn started to show you how Smash Up plays. Uh, for this game, I think I'm going to play uh, Ninjas and dinosaurs versus uh, wizards and tricksters. So that's gonna be our two competing factions. You're gonna take two factions and smash those together or mix those together, and then you're gonna be smashing up bases. Each player is gonna take turns at smashing up bases. So I'm gonna get these decks set up, and then we'll come back, have the bases out, and we'll start smashing up bases and show you how smash up is played turn by turn. All right, we're back. It's time to play some Smash Up. Um, I went ahead and shuffled up the decks. I didn't figure you guys want to see that. Um, and I went ahead and set out the three bases that we're going to be using for the, the purpose of this game. You always use one more base than there are players. So since this is a two-player game, we have three bases set out. Uh, you put your base draw deck nearby because as these bases get smashed up and destroyed, we're going to discard these bases and we're going to be drawing new ones. Um, but to start the game off, um, each player is going to pull off five cards off the top of their draw deck here of their factions and they're going to take a look at those. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, player wizards and tricksters going first and then we'll switch over to the other side of the table and we'll see what uh, the ninja dinosaurs have up their sleeve. So to start things off, each player gets to play one action and one minion. Um, you don't have to play either. You can play either or. You play both. Um, and then just follow the rules on the cards themselves. So let's get started. So we'll play the gnome on the tar pits for the minion and then for an action. Uh, we're gonna play an extra minion with our summon card and then we'll go ahead and play another minion on the tar pits. So that's gonna in the turn for the trickster gnomes and at the end of your turn you're going to draw two cards from your draw deck and put those into your hand uh, take a peek at those and nothing there so that's going to end the turn for the gnome tricksters now we're going to switch over to the uh, ninja dinosaurs all right we're over here on the dinosaur ninja side um, looking through their cards here uh, looks like we're going to play the ninja master uh, on the tar pits as well. Uh, both players are attacking the tar pits. The minion action here says you may destroy a minion on this base. Um, so we're going to be destroying one of the minions from the trickster wizards. But first, the text on the tar pits, the ability text on the base itself says after each time a minion is destroyed here, place it at the bottom of its owner's deck. So instead of this minion going to uh, this player's discard pile, it's actually going to go to the bottom of their draw deck. Uh, but we still destroyed it. That's gonna take this base up to eight um, total power versus the 16 of the break point. Um, once we hit that break point, the base is considered destroyed, and then we score the base. 
Uh, so we played our minion here. We're gonna look and see if we have any actions that we want to play. And we are going to play the infiltrate action on the tar pit. And infiltrate says plan a base. Destroy an action that has been played here. No actions have been played here yet, so that's that action doesn't have any effect. But ongoing, you may ignore this base's ability until the start of your next turn. Uh, so this really will just prevent uh, my uh, minion from being destroyed if that player has anything that could be that could destroy it. So that's going to end the dinosaur ninja turn. We're going to pick up two cards off of our draw deck, put those into our hand, take a peek at those, and then we're going to switch back over to uh, wizard tricksters and see what their next turn is going to be. All right, back on the wizard's trickster side, and we're going to play a minion. And we're gonna go over here to the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, the Mushroom Kingdom ability text says, at the start of each player's turn, that player may move one of one other player's minion from any base to here. So we could take this um, Ninja Master and we could move it over to here if we want to. Uh, however, we do not at this point. So the Chrono Mage that we played though says you can play an extra action this turn. Uh, destroy an action that is played on a base. We'll go ahead and do that and destroy that action there. So that's our action one. Now we're gonna play our second action since our minion allows us to play another action. Choose a player. That player cannot play actions on his or her next turn. So the next turn for the Ninja Dinosaurs, uh, that player is not going to be allowed to play any actions. So that is going to end the turn for Trickster Wizards. We pick up two new cards, put them into our hand and they're going to go back over to the uh, Ninja Dinosaurs and see what they're going to do next. All right, back to the Ninja Dinosaurs. Uh, just looking through their hand here to see what they're going to try to play. Uh, we'll play the Armor Stego. We'll play that on the Tar Pits. And that has an ongoing, has plus two power um, during other players' turns. So right now, we'll have a power of eight. But during the other player's turn, I will actually have a power of 10. So we look at this base here, we're at eight, 19, 11, 16, still not hitting that break point. Uh, we'll play an action. And no, we will not be playing any actions this turn. So we're gonna go ahead and draw two cards and that's gonna end the turn for Ninja Dinosaurs. And now we're gonna switch back over to Wizards Tricksters. All right, we're back to Wizards Tricksters. And it's a good thing Ninja Dinosaurs didn't try to play any actions because they actually couldn't because of the mark of sleep. Kind of forgot that already. I'm um, just trying to get through this quick and kind of missed that, but it worked out since they didn't play any actions. And I would have saw that when we came back over here anyway. Uh, so, Wizards Tricksters, we have no minions in our hand, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so right now we could play only actions since we have no minions. And we're going to play that over here on the Mushroom Kingdom um, just to protect this minion. So if this minion were to get destroyed, uh, instead this hideout card would be instead and your minion is safe. So we're gonna draw two new cards and then we're gonna switch back over to Ninja Dinosaurs and see what their turn is gonna be. All right, back to the Ninja Dinosaur side. So let's take a look here and we're gonna play a minion. Uh, the War Raptor, we'll play that over here on the Mushroom Kingdom. And then we're gonna see, that says ongoing. Uh, gains plus one power for each war raptor on this base, including this one. Um, looking at actions here real quick, we'll play that over here on Infiltrate. Or no, actually, we're gonna play this over here on the Mushroom Kingdom. Play it on a base. Destroy an action that's been played here. So we get rid of the hideout from the Trickster Wizard. And then our ongoing action is you may ignore this base's ability until the start of your next turn. So, that's gonna end it for us. We're gonna draw two new cards. So let's get back over to Trickster Wizards and let's see what their turn's gonna consist of. All right, so we're back to the Wizards Tricksters and we have the one minion again. You may destroy, it's the gnome. You may destroy a minion on this base with power less than the number of minions you have here. So no matter where we place this, um, we're not going to do well. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this guy out here on the home world. Um, he's gonna be the first minion to attack that. And then we have an action that we can play and we are going to play that um, over here. 
Play on a base. Ongoing. On your turn, you may play an extra minion here. So if we get some extra minions in our hand, then we'll be able to play them over there uh, for free. So we're going to pick up two new cards off of our deck. And then we're going to switch back over to the Dinosaur Ninjas and see what their turn is going to be. All right, back to Dinosaur Ninjas. Um, and we have a handful of minions over here. Um, where to play them, we're not sure. We'll play the Laser Top. Uh, Laseratops, sorry, uh, minion on the tar pits. Destroy minion of power two or less on this base. There are none, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, this does take us to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We are one away from the break point of the tar pits, so one more minion over here, and this base will score. And we're going to go ahead and play the Augmentation. One minion gains plus four four power until the end of your turn. So that's gonna take, I'm gonna go ahead and play that on the Lazaratops. That's gonna actually break the first base. We're gonna have destroyed this base because that's gonna push us over the 16 break point. Let's just make sure that the, we're gonna go ahead and score the base after each minion is destroyed here. Plays at the bottom. So this, this base doesn't have any um, abilities once the base is scored. So what happens here is uh, Dinosaur Ninjas are gonna get four points. And then the Trickster Wizards are going to get three points since they were second place. So the score right now is going to be four to three. We'll just set this over here so that we can recall what that score is going to be. And then we are going to go ahead and discard these cards here from these minions for that base. And then we discard uh, those minions for that base. And then we're going to draw up a new base to start attacking. So. That's how you would normally do that. You would normally just set the, the base that's been destroyed over to the side in the discard pile, draw a new base, throw it out there so that players can start smashing up the next base. Um, that's going to end the turn for Ninja Dinosaurs. So we're going to pick up two cards off of our deck, and then we're going to switch back over to the uh, Wizards Tricksters and let's see how they see if they can come back uh, and try to win this next base and maybe possibly win the game. All right, back to. Wizards Tricksters and unfortunately they are not drawing any minions. Uh, I have four actions in my hand, no minions. So we're gonna look at these actions since we cannot play any minions. Uh, we're gonna play the portal. The portal is reveal the top five cards in your decks, place any number of minions revealed into your hand and return the other cards to the top of your deck in any order. So the portal is actually gonna help us out here, not this turn, but hopefully next turn. Actually, I take that back. If we can pick up a minion, we could actually play it. So we can pick up three minions right there. And then we're going to put these two actions back just like so. Now we're going to play a minion. Since we haven't played a minion yet, we've only played an action. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and play the Enchant Enchantress, which takes us up to power five on the Mushroom Kingdom. We're going to draw a card for her action. And then we're going to be able to use the Enshrouding Mist card and still the, on the ongoing ability. On your turn, you may play an extra minion here. So we're going to do that again. We're going to play uh, the Neophyte, which is reveal the top card of your deck. If it is an action, you may place it in your hand or play it as an extra action. Otherwise, return it to the top of your deck. It is an action. Uh, play on a base. It's the Enshrouded Mist again. Play on a base. On your turn, you may play an extra minion here. Um, so I think we're going to stack that up here on this base. So now we can play two extra minions here if we can. And that's what we're going to do because we're going to try to get this five points. Uh, since we're only playing the seven, if we get that five, we're going to get that five or plus our currently we have three points for this side. So we could do it. So. With that, that's going to end our turn. We played that extra action. And now our turn is at the end. We're going to draw two cards and we're going to go back over to the Ninja Dinosaurs. All right, back to the Ninja Dinosaurs. A lot of, a lot of turns happening over there. Uh, a lot of actions, a lot of minions. Um, at the start of each player's turn though, that player may move one other player's minions from any base to here. So that's not really going to help us. I was just reading the uh, ability text for this base. Uh, not really going to help us so much. So we're going to do that. We're going to play the Tiger Assassin on this same base. And that means we get to destroy 
three or less. So we're going to go ahead and kill off the Chrono Mage since that's their highest minion here. So that destroys that minion for the Wizards Tricksters, which takes them back down. Now we're going to play an action for uh, the Ninja Dinosaurs, and we are not because we have no actions. We have a handful of minions, whereas the Tricksters Wizards have a handful of actions. So a um, little bit lopsided on both players. So draw two cards, um, and that's going to end the turn for the Ninja Dinosaurs. Now we're going to switch back over to the other side of the table and see what happens next. All right, back on the Trickster Wizard side. Let's see what they can make happen here. Uh, play minion or play action. We'll play a minion first because it's going to allow us to draw a card. The block the path, plan a base, and name a faction. Ongoing minions of that faction not could, cannot be played here. So we're going to name dinosaurs. That faction can no longer play uh, minions on the Mushroom Kingdom. And that's going to end the turn. So we'll draw two cards. Now we're going to head back over to Ninja Dinosaurs. All right, back to Ninja Dinosaurs. And you can kind of see how the game uh, kind of gets its name of Smash Up. There is a lot of battling that kind of go back and forth between the two factions. And a lot of, a lot of cards can be laid down. Um, I probably should be, in a regular game, you probably would be attacking the other bases more, um, but I don't want this video to get out of hand in terms of time, so I'm kind of focusing in on this one base uh, just to score it so we get a winner here. Um, but you probably would normally be playing up all these other bases and really using the ability text on the bottom of each of these cards um, to the best of your ability and try to spread your minions out. Uh, but for now, let's see. We cannot play dinosaurs on this Mushroom Kingdom, so the only thing we could do is possibly play minions from our ninja side and that's what we're going to do again we're going to play another tiger assassin you may destroy a minion of power three or less on this base so we are going to destroy we'll just take this first one here this enchantress kill her off which is going to take these guys back down to four and pushes us up to uh we have 10 on this so this base is at 14. now we have an action that we can play we'll play our seeing stars action Destroy a minion of power three or less. So we're gonna play that action. We're actually gonna destroy off another minion off of the, uh, the Neophyte. We'll go ahead and kill that off. So we're actually uh, changing the tide here on this Mushroom Kingdom base. So we're gonna draw two new cards because that's the end of our turn. All right, we're back over here. Let's see if we can make anything happen for these guys. We have a minion called the Leprechaun. Let's see what it does. Ongoing, after another player plays a minion here with less power than this minion's power, destroy it. Resolve its ability first. So this could be the big hammer down here for these guys, um, but that's gonna put the base at 17. Uh, on, so that means any player that plays a minion here with less than five power, um, we destroy that automatically. So but we still get to resolve the ability, but we have to destroy the, min destroy the minion, so it's not gonna help um, the dinosaur uh, ninjas over there. So let's play an action, because we have, actually, know what? We're gonna play another minion, and we'll play the gremlin ongoing. After this minion is destroyed, draw a card, and each other player discards a random card. So the only reason we're playing an extra minion here is because we have these ongoing effects, play on a base, you may play an extra minion here. So that's why we get to do that. So now the base is at 10 power on the dinosaur ninja side and we're at seven, eight, nine power over here. So if we can get one more minion over here, uh, we could possibly win, the, win this thing. And it looks like we're gonna do that. Uh, we still get to play another minion here because we've only used one action. So we're gonna play Another minion, we'll play the Archmage, which takes it four power ongoing. You may play an extra action on each of your turns. So the actions and stuff are really stacking up on the side. And thank goodness it's the end of the video because um, I don't think I can keep all this stuff straight. But that's going to break this base. This base is destroyed. Um, 10 on the Dinosaur Ninja side. And we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 on the Wizard um, trickster side so the base is going to be destroyed that's going to take the score to five and three eight which we said we're going to seven victory points so for this game wizards 
Tricksters were able to pull it out. Short game, they may not have won if we went to, would have gone the distance of the full 15 victory points. Um, but I just wanted to give you a good quick turn by turn, even though this video is not super short. Hopefully it showed you kind of how the game plays turn by turn. There's a lot of actions. There's a lot of things that can happen in this game, especially if you start blending new factions. I kind of thought the Wizards Tricksters were gonna, going to be kind of weak in the beginning, um, even before this video started. Um, I thought the Dinosaurs Ninjas were going to be a little bit overpowered, but you can see how that kind of kind of changed with just the, the actions that you can play on bases, uh, the bases themselves, the abilities they have, a lot of playability in this game. Um, I find this game to be a really fun game when you're playing two player, three player, and four player. I think it works great for any number of players that the game allows. Um, and then, like I mentioned to set it up, you can even bridge uh, base systems together and really get a lot more playability where you can have factions, the same factions against each other. So you can have zombies versus zombies. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully we didn't go too fast. You were able to keep up. Uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comment box below. Thanks for watching and keep on gaming.